Mental health refers to your psychological, your emotional, and your social well-being. It affects how you think, how you feel, how you deal with relationships, how you cope, and how you make decisions. But unfortunately, a lot of people don't get the help they need when they are struggling mentally because of these misconceptions. I ask you to make your mental health a priority. It's important. As a therapist, the one thing I learned is that what you think, what you believe affects how you feel and how you feel affects what you do. There's so much things that can happen to us, but if we don't speak out, can create that form of depression. I felt alone. <laughs> I felt everywhere I turned, there was nobody who understood me or, and wanted to help because they saw the outside of me. They didn't see the inside. They saw me from the outside. Sometimes because we don't honor each other, we destroy each other instead of helping. I um, experience a lot of youth going through uh, mental health struggles right now and definitely we're trying to find help or support for them. Every company has EAP that can support the staff, but again it's only three visits that they have. The biggest issue that we have, you can see it online, is mental health issues um, with whether it's adult, children and youth. We're hopefully trying to find or get the support that we need to try to combat that. My main thing is, is the staff okay? Sometimes you forget about thinking about yourself. No one is immune to this mental health issue because it's prevalent, it's, it's across the board. You know, one of the greatest thing that we have is hope. And that's what I want to be. I want to be that hope for them. I'm Jelani Smith. Um, I'm currently a realtor. Right after university, I was working at the bank. There's a lot of favoritism. I just wasn't getting hurt. The culture became so toxic. Um, I remember one time I came to work. Um, I was literally two minutes late because there's a gold train delay, right, which is out of our control. I came at 9 or 2 a.m. Then my manager called me in the office as soon as they're coming. She's like, why are you late? I'm like, there's a train delay, right? And she said, that's not acceptable. There's only so much things we could do. Because usually I come in around 8.45 p.m., right? So that's kind of when I decided, like, I can't be micromanaged like this, right? Um, but I made me to switch because it wasn't for me. It's going to work 9 to 5, so much red tape, right? It just, I just wasn't happy, right? So I found, I found I was taking a toll on my mental health. Um, but I finally made the um, decision to pull the switch, switch over to a fully self-employed role. And looking back at it, definitely no regrets. So about a year ago, uh, the summer of 2022, uh, I had a plan to commit suicide and I knew exactly how I was going to do it. Um, I told myself I'll just do it in the bathtub because it's going to be easier for the paramedics. They won't have a lot to clean up. I'll, I knew exactly what knife I was going to use from the kitchen drawer. All of that was because I just had so much pressure um, with life and the responsibilities of life. I had no idea how to manage all the pressure. So I had pressure from finances. I had taken a leave from my job because the job was so toxic and I had no idea that it was not a good idea to take a leave from your job if you don't have any savings. Um, so when I left my job at the government, I thought it'd be easy just to take another, get another job and life would just continue as normal. But I, I didn't realize how sick I was. I was really, really depressed. I just stayed in bed most of the time and then 
all the little money that I had was just dwindling and I didn't want to go to my parents and ask them for help because I'm so so proud um, and I just thought they would think I was a failure and plus I had a government job and I left and my parents are Caribbean and they just would not understand that they'd be like why don't you just go back to work or what is the issue why don't you want to work and it wasn't that I didn't want to work I just couldn't work in an environment where black people were mistreated so badly within a few months though the depression got so bad, I checked into an emergency room at a hospital. Most people don't think that black people commit suicide or think about committing suicide. That's not true. Most people think that black people who look like me are not sick because there's this idea that if you look well, that you're mentally well, but that's not true. I was extremely depressed and then I was also extremely anxious because I wasn't going to work. I used to seek for help all the places. And sometimes I wonder if that passed on to my son when I see that he's struggling to have a name um, in society. And when you go out there and you try to ask for help, they push you aside.